So thinking on the timing of this day, I thought I would be remiss if I did not bring to you a tale of something that happened on this very day a thousand years ago. This is of the death of the Irish hero Cúchulainn, who lost his life on Solid Day. Now, Cúchulainn was a great warrior from the time he was a child until now, when he was still yet a young man in his 20s. And being such a great warrior, he had made a great many enemies. Among these enemies were Cúroi Macdair, whose father he had slain, and the sons and the daughters of Calatin, whose father he had also slain, and who themselves had been maimed by Cúchulainn. And they knew no single warrior could ever defeat the, this great Irish hero. So they must bring him down via magic and treachery. And so they knew he could not resist the sound of a battle. And they made their arrangements. And on Samhain Day, they made it so it sounded like there was a great battle off at a distant plain. Well, Leverham the Bard, his friend, had learned of this plan, and she knew there was no way Cúchulainn would not go to a battle. And so she arranged for there to be a great party with feasting and such, so he wouldn't hear. That worked for a time, but then Cúchulainn got wind of what was going on and said, no, I shall go forward to the battle. But you can't, it's a trap. That doesn't frighten me, said Cúchulainn. And so he went to uh, prepare his chariot. But the Morgan herself knew that if Cúchulainn were to fight this day, he would die. And so she broke the chariot wheel. And when Cúchulainn came and saw this chariot that had been in perfect condition, had a broken wheel, he grumbled a bit, replaced the wheel, got his uh, friend the charioteer to drive it. And when he went to saddle up his horse to this chariot, the Grey of Maha, the legendary Grey of Maha, for the first time, his horse would not obey him. And Cuchulain said, what is this? You have always been the finest horse in all of the land, and now you will not let me harness you to my chariot? And as he looked at the horse, the horse began weeping. Cuchulain had seen the sign, shrugged his shoulders. And then before he went out, as he always did before battle, he went to see his mother and to drink a cup of milk to fortify himself for the battle, this being an Irish custom. <laughs> and so his mother brought forth a cup of milk and he took a sip and choked and looked down. The milk had turned to blood. And he said, mother, you've given me the wrong drink. Go, go back and get me milk. She did this twice more. Twice more it turned to blood. Now most people would be suspicious, you know, maybe I shouldn't go out if the milk is turning to blood. He just shrugged his shoulders and said, I think there's something wrong with the cow. <laughs> and so he rode forth. And he saw a woman washing clothes, bloody, torn clothes, in the ford. And um, his charioteur, Leg, said, um, Cuchulain, isn't that what you're wearing right now? <laughs> and Cuchulain looked and goes, hmm, yeah, kind of does look like what I'm wearing. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Kept going. Now, there were several geish upon Cuchulain. A geish is a prohibition. You violate this prohibition um, on the pain of your life. And two of Cuchulain's geish were that he could not eat the flesh of the dog, for his name, Cuchulain, was literally the Hound of Cullen, and he could not refuse any food that was offered to him. So, as he was going by, three old women were sitting around a cook fire and said, well met, Cuchulain, greatest hero of all Ireland. Come, join us for our meager feast. 
Cuchulain could not be rude. He said, oh, certainly. And they said, we're making dog. And Cuchulain knew he could not eat the dog meat, but he knew he could not refuse them. So he took the dog meat in his left hand and, and ate it. And all of his strength on his left side left his body. And at this point, he started to say, hmm, I wonder if Leverham might have been right. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't going to um, back down at this stage. Now, Cuchulain had a magical spear. And it was prophesied that this spear, whenever thrown, would kill a king. And that that spear alone was the only spear that could kill Cuchulain. And so, he rode out to the plain where there was a battle. And he noticed that it wasn't a masked battle between two armies. There were various groups of men fighting. And there was a bard standing by two men who were fighting. And he saw Cuchulain and said, Oh, Cuchulain, I am afraid being on this battle. Because I am a bard, I have no weapons. You must give me your spear. And Cuchulain said, I think I have more need of the spear than you do. And the bard said, if you do not give me that spear for protection, I will satirize you and let all know of your greed and your cowardice. And Cuchulain said, so you want the spear? Yes, I want this spear. This is the spear you want. Yes. Give me this spear. Do you want this spear right now? <laughs> yes, said the bard. I want this spear right now. All right, said Cuchulain. And he threw it all the way through the bard. Did not need to worry about being satirized. <laughs> he got disbarred. He got disbarred very good. But Kuroi Madera was there. And as soon as he saw that spear, he snatched it up. And he turned it around, and he flung it back at Cuchulain. And it went through Cuchulain, who fell, pulled the spear out of his belly, picked up his entrails to hold them inside. And he said, I know you have slain me. Give me leave to go to that lake and drink one final drink of water. And Kuroi McDare granted this. And he crawled towards the lake, and he drank. And he thought, it is not meet that such a hero as myself should die on the ground. I must die standing and with my sword in my hand. And so there was a standing stone in the middle of the lake. He went out to the standing stone, took his sword belt, and tied himself to this standing stone so he would not fall. And he brought up his sword and he tied his arm to the standing stone so his arm would not fall and he would die with his sword held aloft. But still, even as he was, neither Lugoy, neither Lugoy McRoy nor any of the other warriors would dare approach him, for they still feared the power of Cuchulain. But when an otter which is also called a sea dog, came and drank his blood. And when a raven landed on his shoulder, they knew he was dead. And Kuroi McDare said, since I have slain Cuchulain, I get his sword. And he strode forward. And making sure that Cuchulain was dead, he reached up and he cut down the binding that held the sword in place. As the sword fell, in one final act of revenge, it cut off the right hand of Kuro Midair. <laughs> this happened a thousand years ago on this very day on Samhain. And that is the tale of the death of Kuhulan. Thank you very much.